He is alive. He has risen from the dead. He is risen indeed. Good morning. What great news. There was a lady by the name of Margaret Sangster Fippen who wrote that in the mid-1950s, her father, who was a British minister by the name of W.E. Sangster, you may have heard of him, began to notice some uneasiness in his throat and his legs seemed to be dragging. When he went to the doctor, he found that he had an incurable disease that caused progressive muscular atrophy. His muscles would gradually waste away and his voice would fail and his throat would soon become unable to swallow. Sangster threw himself into his work in the British Home Missions, knowing that he could still write and that he would have even more time for prayer. Let me say in the struggle, Lord, let me stay in the struggle, Lord, he said. I don't mind if I can no longer be a general. Lord, just give me a regiment to lead. He wrote many articles and books, and he helped organise many, many prayer groups right across England. Gradually, Sangster's legs became useless, and then his voice went altogether. But he could still hold a pen, even though his hands were shaking. On Easter morning, just a few weeks before he died, he wrote a letter to his daughter. In it, he said this, It is terrible to wake up on Easter morning and have no voice to shout, He is risen! But it would be far more terrible still to have a voice and not want to shout. Now, my hope today is that you will have many reasons to shout about the resurrection. And the reason you can shout is because the Easter time, the Easter experience, was not just for those people some 2,000 years ago, for those who witnessed it firsthand, but it's for each one of us today. You may not have realised, but the fact is that the resurrection of Jesus Christ can change your life in the here and now, but it changes it for all of eternity. Allow me to read you the resurrection story, and then we'll just have a quick look at how it impacts our life. I'm reading this morning from the New Living Translation, Matthew 28, 1 to 10. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to see the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake because an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolled aside the stone and sat on it. His face was shining like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the woman, Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He's been raised from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead and that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember, I've told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb, but they were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to find the disciples to give them the angel's message. As they went, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. And they ran to him. They held his feet and they worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. Now, there are some specific things that I think should excite you about this Easter time that would want to make you shout. The first one is that we can count on God's promises. Jesus had promised his disciples and others that he would rise from the dead. And on this first Easter morning, that promise was fulfilled. In John 2, 19 to 22, we read, Jesus replied, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. What? they exclaimed. It took 46 years to build this temple and you can do it in three days? But by this temple, Jesus meant his body. After he was raised from the dead, the disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed both Jesus and the scriptures. Now Jesus' promise was remembered by the disciples and not only was it remembered, it was a force that empowered them and reinforced and grew their faith in God. And it should do the same for us, because if Jesus' promise about the resurrection was true, that means that all his other promises to us are true as well. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says this, For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in him. That is why we say Amen when we give glory to God through Christ. 
And what are those promises? Here's just a few. The forgiveness of sin. Jesus is our constant companion. Security in knowing God will never forsake us. Eternal life with God. Now, if Jesus had not been raised from the dead, then none of those promises would mean much at all. However, since Jesus did rise from the dead, we can rejoice in the fact that he has satisfied all the promises that he has given down through the ages. There has never been one promise that God has given to us that has not been completely and utterly fulfilled through Jesus. And the resurrection of Christ, that first Easter day, is proof that we can rely on God. And, you know, we can also enjoy life to its fullest. Now, this morning, if you're not a Christian, you may well think that Christianity is dull, boring, with little, if any, joy. Some people don't show that, don't they? But nothing could be further from the truth. The fact is that we've been, we have the ability to live life to its fullest because we don't have to worry about things like guilt, sin, or our eternal destiny. We have the freedom to live lives of enjoyment because we have a faith in the resurrected Jesus. Matthew 28 verse 8 says, The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened but also filled with great joy. You can imagine their emotions. Now they were afraid because they had just been spoken to by an angel. They were also afraid because of the message they were given to carry. It's sort of a frightening thing to think of a person coming back from the dead. But at the same time, it is an experience of joy unimaginable when you know that there's one that you've loved and worshipped, who you saw crucified, is alive again. Now, like most of you, I've had close relatives and friends who have died. Most of us do not want to even think or talk about death. We want to keep it at arm's length. But imagine this. If someone you knew died and you knew they were dead and suddenly they came to your door. I would think that I would have experienced what those women did on that first Easter, both fear and joy. But isn't that a part of the enjoyment of life that we have in Christ? To know that we're in a personal relationship with the resurrected Jesus, the creator of the universe. It can be a little frightening, but is the best kind of fear imaginable. Jesus came to earth not only to save us from our sin, but also to give us a life that is abundant with joyful experiences. The message version in John 10.10 10 says, I came so that they can have real and eternal life, more and better life than what they've ever dreamed of. And that's what he's offering us today, a life that is better than anything we can ever have or anything we've ever dreamed of. If you've already taken up this offer of Jesus, this offer of salvation, you know, but now is the time if you haven't. Suddenly our problems don't seem quite so formidable when we know Jesus. The Apostle Peter wrote to some folk who were going through a tough time of persecution and he spoke about Jesus. You love him even though you've never seen him. Though you do not see him, you trust him. And even now you are happy with that joy and inexpressible glorious joy. I think we could rightfully say with Jesus that the Easter time is the best of times, but it's also the worst of times. But I love the best of times because I know that I have my ultimate purpose. Now, after the women had encountered the angels that first Easter morning, they had an even more remarkable encounter with Jesus himself. And as they went, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said, and they ran to him and held his feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. Now, while we could say that God has called each of us to fulfill individual and personal roles, the purpose in life that is true for all of us is found right here. We are to live our lives worshipping Jesus and we are to go and tell others about him. Jesus has come to give you a hope, especially in the middle of a world shut down because of an invisible virus. There is hope. There, he is greater than any virus. This invisible enemy has a lot of people expressing fear. The scriptures tell us many times over, fear not. As W.E. Sangster said, 
It is terrible to wake up on Easter morning and have no voice to shout, He is risen. But it would be still more terrible to have a voice and not want to shout it out at all. Now this morning, I hope that you have some reasons to shout. What I want to do more than anything is to wake up one day in the presence of God with all of you experiencing it with me. There is a coming a day when those who are in a relationship with Jesus will experience their own resurrection and you can be one of them. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's scripture, Romans 10, 9. Have you done that? Have you admitted to Jesus that you're a sinner? Have you claimed him as your Lord and Saviour and put your faith in his resurrection? If not, you can do it today. If you have, let's rejoice together as we go to God in prayer. Will you join me in prayer? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this Easter time. And we thank you today as we celebrate Jesus is alive. He is risen from the dead that we too can have our own resurrection because of Jesus. We thank you that our sin is no longer counted against us, but we are set free from those sins because Jesus has taken that sin and it's gone with him to the cross. He died in our place that we might have life and have it in abundance. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he is our Lord and Saviour. In his name we pray. Amen. My hope for you is that in spite of all that's going on in our world at this moment, in spite of all that's happening, the fear, the uncertainty, the insecurity, we're all impacted. And as that saying goes, we're all in this together. But you know, God has provided a way through. We know that. And the hope of Easter tells me that there is hope. I'm reminded of one little story that I will leave you with, where a submarine lay submerged in New York Harbour. It had broken down, literally, and the American sailors were there thinking, this is the end. They'd all but given up hope. Now, the American Navy sent along a team of divers and they found the sub, and one of the divers went down and in Morse code tapped on the outside of the sub are you all right? And the sailors inside heard this tapping and they realised it was Morse code. And that what they typed back or put back to them in Morse code was this. Is there any hope? And that diver on the outside of that submarine tapped back to them. There is hope. This morning, I say to you, because of Easter, there is hope. There is hope through Jesus. There is a future. There is a hope where the presence of the Lord is. May you have a wonderful and beautiful Easter. May God bless you in abundance. Amen.